Don't want to forget to do that. Jeez, oh, Pete. All right, muting myself. We're at 20 seconds. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates, the show where we give residents an opportunity to know exactly who they're voting for. My guest at this time is second board council candidate, Miss Audrey Young Muhammad. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Us. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. And we are excited to have you on. Um, as I stated, you are running for a uh, second board council person. Yes. Now, some residents may be familiar with you, some may not. So just introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about you. I am um, Sister Audrey Young Muhammad, affectionately known in the community as Sister Audrey Muhammad. Um, but I have been around um, and been an activist here in the community for years. It didn't just start with the water um, crisis. It actually has been um, since I was young, just take it like that. My mom was a um, community activist, um, so she's had us very much involved around here in the community, myself, other family members. But in particular here lately, most people know me from the water crisis, from other things, fighting for justice for the people of not only the second war, but the whole entire city. So we've been around doing things with various other groups. Um, including passing out water, um, helping feed people, those in need, um, just being around, going and fighting and being in the, at the courts, being up in Lansing, whatever it took to get the job done is what we've been doing. So I am affectionately known as Sister Audrey Muhammad, but on the, candidate, on the ballot, you know, I'll be Audrey Young. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Right. And it, it sounds like, you know, just from your advocacy and your... Um, just your the work you've done within the community that you've seen, you know, some of Flint's toughest times, but you've also seen yes. some beautiful things, you know, about yeah. Flint. So can you tell us what do you believe are the three greatest strengths of the city of Flint? The resilience of the citizens. I mean, we've have we have endured so much. And I've seen us come from various backgrounds, different walks of life different ideologies and we have worked together to get it done. I think that the majority of the people, I can say probably all of the people would like to see Flint to be a better place for us to live. Some just need a little bit more guidance on how we can accomplish that. But I think the common goal for each and every one of us is to make sure that we make Flint a better place to live, not just the second ward. And we want to see things cleaned up. And I think that we are ready to get out and do something. We just need strong leadership to help lead us in that direction to get out and get that work done. So I know that's what we're looking for. And that's what we're looking to do. Um, and then also, I think that we have great um, we have great leadership. We have great opportunities here. We have a lot of resources here in this area. I mean, you know, you think about it. We're in the Great Lakes State, but we have... In Flint, we have rivers, we have lakes, we have activities that's here. We have great athletes that's here that's looking to forward to bringing those things about. We have great people here who are ready to teach, lend a helping hand and help us to learn how to have some skills here so that way we can not only take care of our own homes, but we could go out and help to build our communities and make it a great place to live. So I think that all of us centered around the people here, but we have all of these great resources that's here. We don't only have the great people, we have the resources to come along with it. And, and I just want to, because I think you kind of already answered it, but I just want to make sure we get a direct answer. Why is serving on the council important to you? Because I am ready to serve the people. Not have them serve me, but serve the people. So we got a lot of things that we need to have taken care of, and we have a lot of leadership. And I just believe that le good leadership is not one who have to just sit always in the seat at the head of the table, but they know how to pull in the people to sit in those seats to help the, the resources. Like you take, for instance, for me, I'll have a skill set that I have went to college and learned. So I can add that. However, 
I know Brother Jaleel, Brother Terry, people know him as Brother Jaleel uh, and Brother Terry in the community that owns TMC Electric. He knows how to do electricity. I could change a light bulb. I could change a, a basic socket, but I can't teach that class. So me as a leader will be what? Ready to move out the way and pull the people in that can teach those classes. There's so many things that we have as resources here. As a leader, you have to know when it is that you sit there in that seat to guide, and you have to know when you have to allow someone else to guide you to be a team. And I'm ready to be that good team um, leader. Right. And so when we look at the city of Flint overall, because you're talking about, you know, teamwork and effort and how it's going to take us all to bring, yes. you know, the city back to what it once was. If you can make one change, just one improvement to the city overall, like the entire city, what would that change or improvement be? To allow the citizen's voice to really clearly be heard. They can talk and they can tell you what their needs are. But if there's no actions taken on what it is they feel like they need, you're going to lose overall, you're going to lose the um, the confidence of the people. And that's the one thing we don't want to do is lose the people's confidence. Mm -hmm. So if they make suggestions, at least address those suggestions. Don't brush them off and make it look like it's, you know, it's not important. And I think a lot of times that those things do happen, but we would like to see that happen even more. And now let's let's get a little bit more specific to the second board. You know, the, the council seat that you're running for, the ward that yeah. you live in. What are yeah. the two concerns that you have in your ward and how would you work to address them? One is definitely trash, blight. Mm -hmm. um, and to give the, an, an example of that, just here a couple of weeks ago, I saw, an, uh, I won't say, it's not an abandoned home, but it was a vacant home. And trash was put on the curb of that home. Um, it was not picked up. So I called and made the phone calls that we needed to make to see how can we get that trash picked up. It's not about going to social media to show. It's about getting the job done. So instead, I told him, I said, I want to be proactive and not reactive. Mm -hmm. I just kept calling and saying, can you give me an update on when you are going to um, be able to come out and pick it up? It took me actually calling someone else who had a little bit more influence, um, current city council person, and they made the call and roll back by the place and it's picked up. That's one thing that we definitely got to do better with because by the time it got picked up, some of the trash had been pulled out of the bags. We don't want that. We want it picked up in a timely manner and the blight. Next thing is beautification. But I would say overall pride because if there's an acronym for pride that I just really love that acronym because when you think about it, we can go in and clean up all day long, but if the people don't have pride in where they live, they're going to go back and tear it up again. So it, there's various things that can happen with building the pride. But if you see me coming and willing to help you in your community or your individual block and help you get it better together, then guess what? You may come out and say, here, I got a shovel. Let me get that shovel and help you get that up. Or let me get my broom. And then you can see that there's somebody else who cares. So if we can start to build in that, that little bit of pride and they're actually doing the work, then they're more apt to take care of it and make sure that it's kept up. So that's so that's those are the two things in particular is that cleaning. And I guess the cleaning part is, is a part of the beautification. And if I had to add something else and add those all in together, I would definitely definitely say economic development. We need to see some businesses on this north side, in particular in the second ward that will be open so that way we can see ourselves with some self-growth. Now, you, you talk a lot about community and collaboration and working mm -hmm. together. Part yes. of working together on, is going to be working with other council members. And yes. in the past, uh, council members have disagreed at length, and it has cost a lot of valuable time that could have been spent handling city business. Yes. Um, if elected, how would you work with other council members to avoid this? There comes a time where if you see that there's some dispute between you and the council, you sometimes you have to agree to disagree. And then you have to just see what, what where you can find a common ground to work toward what it is that you want. Sometimes it might take a one-on-one -on -one because a person have to know it's not personal because a lot of that is because they feel like it's personal. 
And you have to leave your personal differences out of it because the, because the ward is much bigger than an individual person. So that's one of the biggest things. And I just don't like to have that conflict going on. There's so many things that we can do to break down um, and settle the conflicts. Sometimes it takes a mediator. Sometimes the mediator may not be effective. However, you got to give a chance and try and try. And you can't come into the next meeting with the same problems from the old meeting and still hold that on your shoulders as a personal problem. You know, you just, you just, you just can't. So my thing is, I believe strongly in communication. Communication is the key. It could be that you just misunderstood what it was I was asking for. Maybe I have to give you an example, but that's something that we have to figure out how it is that we can communicate that in a better manner. Right. And I just want to thank you for the time that you've given us so far, but we've yeah. reached the part in our show where I have to ask you some very serious questions. Um, and I'm just wondering if you had a million dollars that you could spend personally, what would you do with it? Would it be only for the second ward or would it be for the entire city? It would be for Audrey Young Muhammad and whatever she purposes it for. What I want? Yes. What I want? Okay. You know what? I'm not a materialistic person. So for myself, um, I just like to see others. I like to see us all grow together. Because if you're growing, I'm growing. And that's, that's real talk. That's for real. Mm -hmm. um, if I had a million dollars, I would be trying to find a way to invest it to make it make more than a million dollars. Mm -hmm. What could we bring in this community? Because if it's a business that we could set up that can be a manufacturing business or something, we keep thinking about manufacturing. We're stuck on Flint being automation that alley. Everything is surrounding automation. We got to come out of that. Let's be real. We have to come into something else that we can produce that would be great for ourselves and around um, the community. I would also like to see something um, small of entertainment. Um, I just remember growing up and the movie theaters that was open up on the north end of town and that we could go to. I used to love Dollar Tuesdays. You know, those kind of things that could be of entertainment, but it can help with building up pride. We got it, but we have to do something realistically that would be able to generate more revenue so that that million dollars isn't just blown. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that personally or for us collectively. Right. It just can't happen. And I just believe in having my money invested in somewhere that I can make it grow so that we can see some long-term effect from it. Speaking of entertainment, mm -hmm. a lot of people wish that they had superpowers or they could do something special. So yes. would you rather fly or teleport? Hmm. I would probably say fly. The reason why I'm, I, I like scenery. <laughs> I like to see things between point A and point B. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to... Um, I would just say, I, I just, I would probably rather fly. And if you could fly I, anywhere in the world tomorrow, where would you fly to? I went to a very beautiful place in Colombia called Cartagena. And it sits on the coast. And there's days that I think about that place. The people there were so humble. Um, they appreciated the smallest of things there. Um, I got a chance to see a village where the people went to the river to get their water in the gallon, in the five gallon jugs, that, that was what they used to clean their homes. They didn't have electricity. Some of them was in the water washing themselves um, and, you know, washing their clothes, those kind of things. It was just very humbling to me and it made me appreciate what it is that I had. However, I did stay in a better part of Cartagena and got a chance to walk around through the village and see one of the old villages, the old war spot. It was just beautiful down there. Some of the art artistry we saw on the streets, you know, they painted. Um, you got a chance to walk through those places. Um, the streets kind of resemble what you would see in Venice. Um, people out with 
you know, shaved ice, the restaurants. It was just very beautiful, very peaceful and very serene. Well, uh, Audrey, I, I appreciate you taking that time to kind of break it up and answer some of those other questions. Here at Meet the Candidates, we like to make sure that people get a full uh, representation of your personality. So thank you for that. But let's get back to some of the real questions. You mentioned okay. water uh, yes. and how they bathed and the different things that they did with water. And we know that water is life. We know that water yes. is a human right. We know that the city of Flint has been known for some amazing things um, yes. from being the birthplace of General Motors to yes. you know our sit down strike and how we revolutionized the unions and even how yes. people deal with housing differently because of us. But more recently, yes. For the past seven years, we've been known yes. as, you know, um, the reason why this country needs to revisit infrastructure, the reason why yes. this country needs to revisit governmental responsibility, right? Yes. So we are seven years and counting into a water yes. crisis. I just want to get your general thoughts on that. Like, um, how, do, how do we address the overall health and education and even the infrastructure part of that? Like, I just want your general thoughts on the water crisis, where we are seven years later, and what can we do to improve? And if people are watching and they're not from Flint, how can they help us? Yes. Um, I still get calls from people across the country. And when they realize that we're still in the midst of a crisis, they say, I thought they got that fixed. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried to explain to some um, or very early on when it first came to light early 2016, um, when the world really got to know what was going on here, um, that, that, that the water crisis is not going to be, oh, we got it fixed and it's together in a year. I said, realistically, we're talking about probably anywhere from six, seven, eight years to 10 years or more of a totally getting taken care of. Part of it is because um, many people who don't know that engineering aspect, and I'm not an engineer. Mm -hmm. However, I do have friends that are engineers and it made sense, you know, how you have to, uh, how they have to um, repair and take the time to make sure that the infrastructure is, is fixed and repaired in stages. But I know we all wanted it fixed overnight. To me, just being honest from the very beginning, I ended up with a whole house filtration system, mm -hmm. which I have to get the filters replaced you know, at least before a year's time, when a year is coming, I can tell it because my skin is starting to itch. It starts to even getting little um, like rashes on it. So I have to get those filters changed. I also have a reverse osmosis system put on my kitchen sink so that I can use the water from that to cook and um, do other things in. I use a general water for um, just for bathing. However, that we would love for people to definitely keep donating to us. You know, we look at the small bottles and we look at the big bottles. The whole house filtration system can ease your mind greater than just having the bottles because those bottles is used for, for consumption. You know, when you're cooking, drinking. However, the concern of our skin, just think about it. Your skin is the greatest, biggest organ of your whole body. What gets on your skin is absorbed inside of your body. We have so many things that else that the, um, the water is doing to us that's besides just rashes, because that's the external things, what you can see. We can't even, we have no clue of what all it has done to our internal organs. You know, I think about myself and my overall health. It's good, but I can tell little differences in when I'm um, exposed to the water versus when I'm not. I can tell the difference when I go out of town and I get a bath in the water out of town versus here. Though there's other cities that's affected. However, Flint is definitely affected and they're testing the water here. We still got the things going on with the PFAS in the water. We've had some ugly things and some ugly history and we know people that have died because of this water. We got to do something, but you know what? I was told a long time ago, don't buy your whole house filtration system, make them buy it. And I said, I'm not going to sit around and allow myself to die waiting on somebody else to do for me what I got to do for myself. Uh, I was fortunate. 
to be able to do that and have somebody to help me. Everybody is not fortunate enough to have that to happen. However, I would like to see that everybody could get a whole house filtration system put in their homes. Whether you have Flint water or you have water somewhere else, you really need to get it. It is so important for yourself and your overall health. Great. And as we come to a close, I have two really quick questions um, okay. that I do want to ask you. There mm -hmm. is $99 million of uh, funding coming yes. of Flint's way, relief funding. And yes. uh, just really quickly, 20 seconds, where would you like to see that funding go? Go toward the people's water bills. I said it last night at the city council meeting. Everybody will win. We'll get a credit. The city will get money in their funds because they'll get paid from it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, and you can kind of wrap these two things up in one. Uh, one, where do you see uh, your ward in the next few years under your leadership? And why should the residents vote for you? My ward, in an, if I'm elected, the main thing that I want to work on is reinstilling pride in the community. And pride, there's an acronym for the word pride. And I'll tell you this, P, positive preparation and productivity. R, respectful. We got to be respectful of one another. I, we got to start thinking about some independence and doing some things um, for ourselves and making sure some stuff happens. D, make sure that you're dependable. Because we gotta have be people gotta depend on you. We gotta depend on you to report. We gotta depend on you to clean up. We gotta depend on you to help take care of your own community and put forth an effort of effective of effectiveness. Because if we together work together, the community does not belong to the city council person. It does not belong to the mayor. It it belongs to the people and the people there. If you want your your community to look good. Please, you got to stand up. You got to take care of it. You got to take action. Clean around your own house. Make sure that you even say, hey, please, we appreciate it. You don't have to say, don't dump here. Say, we would appreciate it if we don't, if you don't dump. Say it respectfully. And my, my thing is, I say, a successful community requires the community to plan and work together. There's no way that one person elected can make it happen. They're just sitting there being a voice for you, but you got to get up and we all got to help and do this all together. So I'm being, I'm a realist. I'm a realistic person. So if I say we all got to work together, I still work, whether I'm elected or not, but I would love to see us get out and work. And one of the things I do intend to do is be out there and continue to be a worker in the community, not one just talking about it, but doing anything and everything that I can do to help. And that's what I've been doing all along. All right. Well, sister, are